to Scott Davis. The ad seemed too good to be true. A steady $300 a week and a place to live, all for watching a secluded farm in southeastern Ohio. The job of a lifetime. Had recently broken up with his girlfriend and was looking for a new start in life when he saw the ad on Craigslist in 2011. The ad mentioned that over 100 applicants has responded to the job posting. So David could barely contain his excitement when he got a call telling him that he was one of the job finalists. All he had to do was meet his employer and check out the farm. After a final interview in a local restaurant, David climbed into the back of a white Buick, while his new employer, a heavy-set man named Jack, squeezed into the front seat. A burly teenager, whom Jack introduced as his nephew, was behind the wheel. As they drove, the road took them farther and farther away from civilization. Soon, they were surrounded by dense woodland, and not long after, the Buick creaked to a stop on a secluded stretch of the dirt road. Jack told Davis that I've left some equipment just down the hill, so Davis hopped out to help them carry it up to the car. That's what he was there for. Jack led the way, but they somehow got turned around in the thick underbush, and Davis found himself walking with Jack and the young man right behind him. Davis heard the click of a gun hammer. As he spun toward the sound, a bullet shattered his elbow. He stumbled into the woods. Behind him, Jack cursed and fired a round after round at his back. They all missed, and David spent his next hours creeping through the woods like a hunted animal, blood soaking his right side, never sure if Jack or his silent accomplice would be around the next bend. Long after sunset, Davis finally found his way to a rural house, where he pleaded with the owners to call the police. Over the next few days, the horrifying reality of the situation came to light. Jack was actually a man named Richard Beasley, who used this Craigslist ad to lure men into the woods to kill them. His nephew was 16-year-old Brogan Rafferty. Together, the two already killed three men and buried their bodies in shallow graves in the woods. In 2013, Beasley was sentenced to death and Brogan Rafferty was sentenced to life in prison. In 2003, Brian Boucher was looking for a roommate to help share the rent and John Williams was looking for a place to stay. It was a match no different from thousands of others that happened on Craigslist all the time. And for a while, it looked like it would work out. That is, until Williams began acting strangely. To sweeten the deal, Boucher had offered his new roommate the only bedroom in the apartment hoping that the added privacy would convince him to stay. It was just what Williams was looking for, because Williams had a secret. According to Boucher, Williams kept to himself. A lot. Boucher would spend hours in the apartment thinking he was alone, only for Williams to suddenly walk out of his room with his head down, do whatever he had to do, and then disappeared inside the dark bedroom again with only the soft click of the door's lock as a farewell. Boucher began to get worried. As the months passed, Williams began staying away from the apartment for extended periods of time, and during one of these absences, after they had been living together for 10 months, Boucher had had enough. He broke into the locked bedroom, intent on packing up Williams' things and sending him on his way. On the bed, he found a bulging manila envelope, and what he saw inside made his blood run cold. It was filled with the torn up credit card offers that Boucher had received in the mail. Williams had been going through his trash and collecting pieces of it. Along with the shredded mail was a sheet of notebook paper with the names and addresses of Boucher's family members, including creepy personal details like the date his parents had been married. On another sheet of paper was Boucher's credit card information and the passwords to many of the websites he used. It was like a bizarre file on Boucher's private life. Then, Boucher found a diary, and at the end of one of the entries, he found a chilling sentence. 
I'm only now just starting to get over being afraid every time someone looks at me twice in the street. Every time a cop looks at me, thinking they know. All it took was a quick Google search for Boucher to find his roommate on the front page of America's Most Wanted. Months earlier, Williams, real name Dino Lawrence Smith, had pulled off a brazen jewel heist in San Francisco, making off with $10 million in diamonds. A call to the police revealed that Williams was already in custody. Boucher never found out why he'd been collecting his personal information, but he does know that the situation could have ended much worse. Catherine Ann Olson had recently graduated from Minnesota St. Olaf College and was working part-time as a nanny until her career in theatre kicked off. She was 24. Michael John Anderson liked to play paintball and wondered what it felt like to kill a person. He was 19. Posing as a mother named Amy, Anderson posted a Craigslist ad in 2007 looking for a person to babysit the child the following day. Olsen jumped at the opportunity and then made arrangements for her to show up at the house at around 10 a.m. to start the job. According to some comments made by Olsen to her roommate, she had a weird feeling about the job, but she decided to go through with it anyway. There was no way she could have seen what was coming. After arriving at the house, a run-down split level in Savage, Minnesota, Olsen was greeted by Anderson, who led her up to his bedroom on the second floor. Nobody's sure exactly what happened next, but at some point, Olsen tried to run. Anderson shot her in the back with a 357 Magnum, dragged her body down the stairs, and stuffed her in the trunk of his car. He abandoned the car a few blocks away. Then, in an attempt to destroy the evidence, Anderson crushed Olsen's cell phone and wrapped it up in a bloody towel before dropping it into the public trash can. He apparently didn't realize that the towel had his name written on it in black marker. In 2009, Anderson was sentenced to life in prison without parole.